Welcome to July Set News to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized piece. Today, I've got some pretty interesting things going on. First up, we're going to talk about uh, the Bitcoin exchange inflows to exchanges and how this could be an indicator of things to come in September, potentially selling off. Also, we're going to take a look at a really fantastic website. It's pretty funny. It's called BitcoinerShite.com. And then we're going to talk about Ethereum and the fees that are going on, how it can be fixed. And finally, we'll do a Cardano update. So, well, uh, first of all, let's talk about what's going on today. Today, it is Sunday, and we've got uh, $2.11 trillion. Not too bad, right? $2.11 trillion in the market cap. We'll take it. And uh, look, I know recently I, I haven't been putting out uh, videos lately. I've been uh, super busy with that uh, charity obstacle course event for kids that we do here once a year. And uh, now that that's over as of yesterday, uh, I should be able to put out more videos. But it was a great experience. I love doing those things. And uh, here we are back in the market. So look, Bitcoin price is 48 thousand all that stuff but there's one thing i want you to notice right here this thing called the average daily sentiment and it is 50 out of 100 which is essentially neutral well it's 50 50 right so what we're using is trade the chain it's great for sentiment analysis i always say if you're, if you're going to be a trader you know get as much information as you can fundamental analysis technical analysis and also sentiment analysis and you can just see that right now people don't know where things are going that's going to play a part in what we're going to talk about next but they're kind of like on the fence. And I think it's because of this September, September issue coming up and what could happen next month. But anyhow, Bitcoin is teetering around 49,000, could be 50,000, you know, anytime, who knows? Ethereum has dropped a little bit, but still, actually it's no, 24 hours have been 0.17. So still hanging around 3,200 bucks, hasn't gone below 3,000. Cardano's on an absolute tear, almost three bucks. It will go uh, higher than that, I think. We'll see how it all goes. And, uh, you know, some other things have done really well. Let's see, anything going on today for the one hour, 24 hours? Whoa, 13% for internet protocol. Amazing. All right. And then real quick, if you want to take a look at some projects over the next hour, as far as sentiment analysis, do as much research as you can. Take a look at these. There we go. Take a look at Redcoin, Revein, Decred, Flow Dapper, and some other stuff, and Zillica. So that is Trade the Chain, link in the description. But let's just jump into today's big story, which I think is really what is the pulse of this market. We're looking at Bitcoin exchange inflows. So first of all, if you're new to crypto, welcome. Thanks uh, Thanks for dipping your toes into the waters. I got to tip my hat. I think it's the best time to be involved. And uh, here's the thing. This is from Santiment. And Santiment states that uh, Bitcoin just made history with its largest day of exchange inflow since June 19, 2019. These days are now tied for the largest inflow of all time with 1.68 million Bitcoin flowing to exchanges on these days. So if you're new, just so you know, when uh, people uh, take their Bitcoin off or their cryptocurrency off the exchanges, that's good news because usually what happens is they're like, hey, I want to hold this. I want to hold on to this for a long time. I don't trust the exchanges. We know they get hacked. So I'm going to put it into cold storage and not touch it for a while. That's good. That means that, uh, you know, if there's the same demand, and there's not a much or not, not as much supply price usually goes up now the opposite actually happens and that's what they're talking about here they're saying look uh these inflows are massive it's tied for the most since 2019 and what that means is people are going you know what i don't know what's going on but i'm gonna put on the exchanges in case something happens or i have a plan to sell because that's the only way i can sell it i mean there's other ways i guess you i guess you can do it you know if you get a friend or whatever but uh that's the easiest way put on exchange and start selling so right now, you got to think to yourself, what's going to happen? No one knows. And that's why we took a look at that sentiment analysis. And we're at a 50-50, uh, 50 out of 100. So look, here's the thing. If you're like me and you're just a you know regular investor, this, these types of things, you're like, fine, do whatever you want to do. If you have to take profits, that's fine. But I don't care about what's happening in the short term. I don't care what's happening next week. I don't care what happening next month. I don't even care what's happening until the end of the year, quite honestly. Actually, I'm looking out one year, three years, five years, 10 years. And that's really where the money is made. It's just sitting on your hands and doing nothing, which leads me to my next point. And this is a great website called Bitcoin or shit.com and i'm just quoting it not a big profane guy but there's what it is and i actually stole this from guy from coin bureau he tweeted this and i thought this is fantastic and i've actually sent this to all my friends and family i thought it was hilarious and uh it's funny but it actually has a real world point and the point here is that look if you 
would have just invested, been an investor and not bought stupid stuff, you'd be way ahead. And here's the thing. Here's another thing I will tell you. I've been talking to all my friends and family since 2017 about crypto. You know how many people have actually invested in crypto? Three. Three people. And we talk about it all the time and we laugh our heads off about our gains and all the all the slow, all the people that weren't exuberant enough to actually get into where we're at. We'll just say that. And uh, this is a great website, which I, I share with them. I'm like, hey, remember that thing I was talking about? Well, here you go. So if you click here, if you have Bitcoin instead of Astro World tickets, whatever the heck those are, you'd have 2,600 bucks. This was in 2018. And then it says uh, if you bought Bitcoin instead of a uh, Philips Hue LED, you'd have 3,350 because the Philips flash uh, light came out in 2012. Now some people actually need light, so whatever else. If you bought Bitcoin instead of a Pornhub premium, you'd have 1,500 bucks because Pornhub premium, I guess, was in $1,500. I have no idea what that website is. Anyhow, <laughs> if you bought Bitcoin instead of a Impossible Burger, you have 500 bucks, and you get what I'm saying here. So the big thing is this. I do not care what's happening next week or next month. If you just look long-term, that's where all the money's made. You don't see the top uh, richest people in the world. They're not trading. They're not doing swing trades and day trades and stuff like that. They're investors. <laughs> they've built businesses. They've built corporations. They've invested into fantastic companies. and They just sat in their hands and did nothing. So just remember that when there's a big, huge influx of price action. All right. So that's, that's it with that. Let's move on to our next piece, which is Ethereum fees can be fixed. You got to love that, right? Ethereum fees can be fixed. I own a lot of Ethereum and everything I talk about on this channel, I'm pretty biased, just so you know that. But uh, I also own a lot of Cardano. I own a lot of Avalanche. I own a lot of Tezos. I own a lot of different things because I don't know what's, what's going to be the winner. And Ethereum could be the winner. I think it can be fixed, but here's a problem. I think it's a problem we all know about. So this quick article says that Ethereum fees jumped 154% since last week. And I know we had that EIP 1559, but that was not designed to reduce gas fees. You can burn a lot of Ethereum. So maybe in the future that'll help. And of course you can tip your, your operators, uh, the um, uh, people who are actually the miners to get things going. But in all honesty, as far as fees, it's super pricey. So here's what's going on. Uh, Ether fees have jumped since August 21st, spiking 154%, uh, whatever. So fees are, are high. You can go anywhere else and you can take a look at the fees. Like on this one, you're looking at OpenSea. Oh my God, the max fee was 2,200 bucks. And then this was for uh, Uniswap over here on the right-hand side, looking at a $400 fee. And you were, geez, you weren't even buying that much stuff. And it's the same thing all the way around. So. When I say it can be fixed, well, here's a couple of projects you can take a look at. Uh, they're called uh, Optimism, right here. Optimism and Arbitrum. Haven't done, I haven't done a deep dive on those. Maybe we'll do some later, but just take a look at those. Additionally, there are other projects that aim to crush ether gas, like Fuel.sh, Aztec Network, Starkware, Starkware.co. Loopring is another one I've used. It does actually do well when you can you know, if it has the liquidity in it and Hermes.io and don't forget about Matic. So the thing I want to bring to everybody's attention is that this can be fixed and you have to take a look at history real quick just to make sure, because when we talk about these things, I'll get to this in a second. When we talk about all these things about, well, you know, Ethereum sucks because the fees are so high or Ethereum is awesome and it's going to fix the fees when Ethereum 2.0 comes out. It could, it definitely could. You have to remember, take a look at, at, at the history of technology in the past. Did you think Amazon, I mean, Amazon at one point sucked. It was, did you use Amazon at the very beginning? It took a long time. These are pretty high. And uh, the selection was just atrocious. But what they did in the background was they worked like mad and they bought up all the different warehouses out there. And Bezos was a maniac and he made things run. And another thing, Facebook right now would have gone blipped out of existence if it didn't upgrade everything, not Facebook itself, of course it steals all our data, but if it would have not upgraded and bought Instagram and WhatsApp and everything else around it, it wouldn't even be here. So it is the project that can upgrade and can scale and do all those things with the partnerships that is going to make it. Can Ethereum be fixed? Yes. Is it great right now? No, it's awful. And this leads me to one of my next points. And I just want to bring this up real quick because it does kind of bother me a little bit, which is, um, these NFTs that are built on Ethereum, this is just so people can make a lot of good, a good amount of money. 
And uh, that's really what it comes down to. Nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But as far as like helping out, I mean, the unbanked and the underdeveloped uh, type of industries out there, NFTs is not it. NFTs, like these cyberpunks, like look at this. Look at these prices for cyberpunks. If you bought a cyberpunk, congratulations for you making a ton of money, right? But you're looking at like uh, this one here, Cyberpunk 888. It was bought for 2.87 million. So all those gas fees we just saw, they don't care about gas fees because they're making a boatload of money. And uh, Fidenza, CryptoPunk 9373, again, tons of money. So this is not going to be sustainable as time goes on, and hopefully they can fix it. Like I said, I own a lot of, Cardano, I own a lot of Ethereum and Cardano and Tezos and all that stuff. I hope they're all big winners. I think there's big enough space for them, but I just don't know. But this is not what cryptocurrency digital assets were supposed to be. It was supposed to help a lot more people than just a bunch of people get loaded. That's all I can say to it. Anyhow, let me know what you think. There's nothing wrong with making a profit. Let me just say that. I mean, look, look, I've worked my entire life building businesses and here I am. But uh, at some point, you know, these things get a little ridiculous. Hopefully uh, they can be fixed. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Uh, quick Cardano update. So real quick, this was their ecosystem on May 12th, 2021. Look at that, just a little bit here, a little blips here. So let's fast forward June, July, August, uh, about three and a half months or so. Now here's their ecosystem and they're just kind of blowing up. So when people talk about, you know, what's going on and what could be the, the big thing, I just refer them to Charles Hoskinson's uh, AMAs and updates and stuff like that. So he just did an update. This was uh, a couple of days ago. And he said a couple of things. First of all, this on uh, Thursday, it was their go or no go day. And he says, we, everybody, everybody sat down, a bunch of the, of the developers, the team, they went over all the different checklists and they said, go, 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 go. It's all green. And they're gonna hit their mark as far as the 12th of September to bring about smart contracts. And then he said, as far as the bugs right now, he goes, there, you know, we haven't, we've gone through our checklist. Doesn't seem like there's big problems. We're gonna go forward. And, uh, and he did make a really good point, which was this. I gotta commend him and he's right. He goes, for all these like DeFi products that are out there, he goes, you know, a lot of the times it's not the, the developer's money that is being into that protocol. It's the people that put their money into it that lose all their money because of a rug pull. He goes, so that's what we're trying not to do explicitly. So these things that we're due, yes, it takes time. Yes, it takes a little bit of, uh, of effort, but uh, in the long run, and he says, I think it's best for everybody. Gotta agree. Anyhow, and that's it for today. So look, um, this is a quick Sunday. I think uh, tonight I'll be with uh, with George, Cryptos Are Us, and uh, James and Invest Answers for the DCA show. That'll be later tonight. And uh, looking forward to talk to those guys because they've been really in the know about what's going on. I've been kind of busy, but uh, that is it. So if you stuck with me all the way to the end, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And that's it for today. And I'll see you on the next one.